With quality brand name products at affordable wholesale prices, Cash and Carry is the perfect place to shop. Whether shopping for individual, business, churches, or more, Cash and Carry is sure to meet your needs. Cash and Carry of Cookville, 931-528-8050. That is uh, one way to smack an exclamation point on the end of a season. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Marcus Satterfield Show presented by IWC Cash and Carry. For the final time this season, he's Tennessee Tech head coach Marcus Satterfield. I'm your host, Dylan Bozzano. Man, oh, man, the Golden Eagles final game of the season win it 55-19 against Murray State. So for Tennessee Tech, a third place finish in the OVC. That's their best finish since their championship season in 2011. Also a 5-3 and three OVC record, first winning record in conference play also since that 2011 season. And coach, what a way to end the year. Yeah, I mean, we had some momentum going into the week, you know, with a big win against TSU last week. Uh, Offensive line started playing well. Offensively, we were very explosive, uh, you know, last week against Tennessee State. So uh, we had a lot of expectations going into this game, and, and I was a nervous wreck that are we really playing better or did we just get lucky against Tennessee State? And it proved that our guys kept improving, our coaches kept coaching. It was a great, great day for us offensively, defensively, and kicking. Well, you know what happens next. You know part of the show. Got to imagine 55 points can be pretty fun. Yeah, this will be a good segment here. All right, let's roll the film. Introducing... The game highlights, and that is brought to you by Wendy's of Cookville. So Tennessee Tech, Murray State, final game of the 2016 campaign. Of course, it was senior day, so a number of Golden Eagles seniors were honored before the game. There's Michael Birdsong. There's Malik Hall. You're about to see Jordan Smith, coach, always a marquee event. Yeah, it's great, you know, to have the families out there, get a little recognition their last game, uh, Tucker Stadium. And now the Golden Eagles, of course, take the field. Tennessee Tech wins the coin toss, the first of many victories on the day of a great day of Golden Eagle football. Tennessee Tech wins. They decide to take the football to start things off. And Michael Birdsong, in that first drive, there's a catch to Dante's Bird. You're going to hear his name an awful lot throughout this highlight. He takes it 23 yards down to the Murray State 30. Golden Eagles would end up capping off the drive thanks to Nick Madonia, a 37-yard field goal. It's up. It's good. Coach, he had a great way to end the season, Nick Madonia. Yeah, and those weren't easy kicks he was making. We had a swirling win down there. He did a great job. Very next drive, Michael Birdsong from his own end zone. That's Chris Cates, a senior, 24 yards down the far sideline. So the Golden Eagles are on the move. Very next play. Last game against Tennessee State was Birdsong, his longest rush of the year, 32. He says, I won't do you one better, I'll do you two. Coach, longest rush of the year, it's 34 yards. Yeah, same same call, too, same play he executed. Offensive line did a great job, and uh, that, was, that was a big play for us, momentum-wise. Deja vu all over again. Nick Madoni, this one a chip shot for him, only 46 after a school record 57-yarder. So the Golden Eagles up 6 nothing. Malik Hall right here. Katie Humphreys, the pass is intercepted. Coach, previous drive, Malik Hall had to be helped off the field. Now he gets a pick. Yeah, Malik and Josh were both on the ground, so it's good to see him bounce back and get a takeaway. We challenged our defense to do that the last two weeks. They did a great job. And the Golden Eagles come right back. Dante's bird, his longest reception of the season, 43 yards he is in and Tennessee Tech leads 13-0. That was huge you know we wanted to get Dantez a bunch of balls and give him a chance to set the record and uh, he came out swinging and did an excellent job you know running with the ball after the catch. Second play second quarter stop me if you've heard this before Dantez Bird 25 yards in the strike so the Golden Eagles down to the 10 yard line looking like Tennessee Tech is going to score once again and they do it's Edie Thainwright his sixth rushing touchdown of the season all Tennessee Tech, the Golden Eagles lead 20 nothing. Coach, so nice. We'll show it to you twice. Yeah, that was huge, and they, they brought a little double-edged pressure that we were expecting. Jordan Jaberti blocked the right guy. We made you know created a matchup with Edie one-on-one and thought he would win it, and he did. And So anytime you can design a play like that and they execute it, that means that they're getting coached up and attention to detail is where it needs to be. Pair of Murray State field goals makes it 20 to 6. Are the Racers coming back? No, sir. There goes Yeedee Thainrath, his longest rush of the afternoon. 30 yards. Yeedee Thainrath, this is late in the first half. Two plays later, Golden Eagles are going to cash in. There's that man again, Dantes Bird. He's in. Touchdown, Tennessee Tech. It's 27 6, Golden Eagles. Yeah, that was a two minute drive, so it was huge that we were able to run the ball. They had two timeouts, so we couldn't give them a chance to uh, use their timeouts to make us punt. So we executed some nice runs there and got one in. So TTU is going to lead by 21 at the half. Is it one final chance? Not so fast. There's Devin Sullivan. A pick six. He's going places. Touchdown, Tennessee Tech. Man, what a defensive play to end the first that half. That was huge. That was, you know, what Eastern Illinois did to us. We were able to do to Murray State. So 
uh, to, you know, again, challenge our defense to get turnovers after the first part of the season. We were very uh, deficient in that category to come out and get two in the first half and another one be for a touchdown right before the half to zap any chance of momentum swings uh, was, was a big-time moment for our football team. So you guys are 34-6 at intermission. What's the locker room like at this point? Pretty cool. Uh, you know, I was going to go in there and set the record straight and make sure they were, uh, you know, they had their mind right because I was afraid they'd go in there and be a little giggly and silly, you know, because – uh, a lot of teams would do that after the success they had in the first half. And I walked in, the coaches are yelling and screaming, not at the kids, but with the kids. The kids are focused. They're saying the right things. I just kind of leaned back against the locker and was kind of watching it like a proud parent. And this big old hand came around me, and it was bird song, and he's sweating a little bit. He had this <laughs> smile on his face like, wow, we've, we've, this, is not, he said, this is not the same team we started with, is it? It's like, no. And he said, well, let's just enjoy it. And I, I just sat back again like a, a kid on Christmas morning watching – uh, a group of kids, you know, continue to grow, uh, not only each each game, but each half of each game. And, and just to see the maturity was awesome. Well, enjoy it. They did. Let's see how the Golden Eagles finish their 2016 season. Let's take you to the third quarter. Obviously, Tennessee Tech in control at this point. They lead it 34-6. It's Murray State's first drive. They would end up going 15 plays, but here on a fourth and two, it's a pass Humphreys, and it's knocked down Anthony Akers. So Tennessee Tech's defense stands tall. They will get the football right back. And here's more Dante's Burt. Completion, eight yards. That tied the record of Tim Benford with 68 catches, catches Tim Benford back in 2008. Coach, that little pass there, that's the record breaker, number 69. Yeah, we changed some of our jet sweeps to where they turned into passes to try to help him get the record. And, you know, anytime you're mentioned with Tim Benford, it's a big deal. Tim Benford was an all-time great. Dante's Burt, Michael Birdsong helped get him down. Here's Austin Hicks helps to get them in. He goes 42 yards after the catch and run, another touchdown, Tennessee Tech. Coach Austin Hicks. Yeah, great job right there by Birdsong, uh, realizing, you know, the defense that they were given had an opening on the perimeter. Great job by Jabirdi getting the block. Golden Eagles lead 41 6. Got to show you your boy Tim Collins with the oh, sack I mean, there. Just two weeks in a row, he was all over the quarterback, making the tackles life miserable, you know, against Tennessee State and then again against Murray State. What a great two weeks to finish the season. All Golden Eagles, their first drive of the fourth quarter. I thought this was one of the coolest moments of the game. Malik Hall gets the carry on the sweep. He's going to dart into the end zone for a touchdown. Again, the two freshman tight ends right there. Freaking uh, Jaberti just did an unbelievable job zoning that off. And then get the Malik redemption carry from the Tennessee State game where they said he fumbled it on the one where I oppose a little bit. But to get him a touchdown on his last play in the stadium was huge. Golden Eagles lead 48-6. Murray State would score a touchdown, miss the extra point. We bring in new quarterback, same result, Dantes Burt. That one broke the receiving yards record. He ends with 933, most in Tennessee Tech history. Yeah, that was big for us. And, you know, you want to have those, those, those records on your watch so you can help you in recruiting when you recruit other wideouts. But there's another one with Jordan Smith, senior last game, wanted to get him a catch, and he turned it into a touchdown, which was uh, neat for Colby and neat for, for Jordan. Final Golden Eagle score gets him to 55. Murray State would end up scoring a touchdown. So your final is Jordan Smith. Rest of the guys celebrating. Tennessee Tech, 55. Murray State, 19. Said it earlier, but, man, what a way to end the year. Yeah, it was huge. And, uh, you know, when you walk across the field, I know those coaches. Coach Stewart's done a great job, and they've had a great year. And I told our guys, be proud of that win because Murray State's beat a lot of really good teams and played in a lot of really big games with some, you know, really good teams. So, uh, you know, Coach Stewart was very complimentary of us, and that was uh, a huge moment for us moving forward. Taking a look at the final stats, we'll spotlight both of the quarterbacks first. Katie Humphreys, 63 times he threw the football, 378 yards. So he ends his OVC career second all-time in passing yards, third all-time with 73 touchdowns. Another great game by Michael Birdsong, 18 of 25, 278 yards and three scores. But you look a couple lines down, Dantes Bird, 14 catches, 198 yards, and two touchdowns. I mean, you can't really have a better game. No, that was a great way to close out the season. Uh, you know, anytime, again, you know, we got two, t two turnovers, two takeaways on our defense, one for a touchdown. So, uh, you know, those stat lines are good. Rushing 118 yards for the second week in a row. Probably by Yeedy, our offensive line showed up again. And then Michael Birdsong doesn't get enough credit. Like, he's a real quarterback. He's not in the spread, just throwing the ball around 100 times. He throws it. And there's a reason behind every throw. And he has to operate the line of scrimmage. And he gets hit a lot. And uh, he's under center. And he makes all the different throws an NFL quarterback has to make. And so to be over 60% completion percentage like he was for the year, the types of throws and the quality of throws he made, I think says a lot about the type of quarterback he is moving forward and the chances it's going to make for him, hopefully, at the next level. And so the ball game ends, and, and we mentioned it earlier. 
First time in five years, third place finish. First time in five years and above 500 record in the OVC. Those are two pretty noteworthy things. Right. It wasn't our goals going into the season. You know, we want to win championships. But to be able to start the way we did with a young football team and keep fighting and never quit. Now, you know, a lot of it goes to our coaches. Our coaches kept coming in and giving, you know, laying it on the line every day for these kids. I think the kids saw how the coaches work and it kind of played off each other. But to finish uh, with that momentum, you know, three-game win streak in the OVC and get third by ourselves. Uh, gives us a chance to go make a dent, you know, in recruiting and give us a leg up on some other teams in the area. So the Golden Eagles weren't the only team in the OVC to end their regular regular season. Everyone else was in action. Let's take a look at how things unfolded with the OVC scoreboard and standings brought to you by the OVC Digital Network. It was a do-or-die championship showdown. Jacksonville State hosting UT Martin. Gamecocks win their third consecutive OVC title, intercepting Troy Cook, the Martin quarterback, four times in the first half to cruise to the win. Eastern Illinois, they blank Eastern Kentucky 24-0. They held the Colonels, the Panthers did, only 19 yards of total offense and zero first downs in the second half for their first OVC shutout in a decade. All the dramatics in the conference took place in Cape Girardeau. It was a Ronald Butler pass to Patrick Smith, 14 yards for a touchdown, only 16 seconds left to give Tennessee State a one-point win, 32-31. Austin P. a loss, 49-13 to Kentucky and FBS team, but Governors actually led 13-0 in that game. Now to the look at the standings. Golden Eagles, Coach, you see it right there, 5-3 and three and a third-place finish. Yep, that's huge. You know, each week we talked about you know, creating, uh, at all the teams in front of us that you know had on our schedule, we could take care of business, we could get this done, and to get it done is, again, not what we wanted ultimately, but it's a step in the right direction. Final look at those standings, Jacksonville State undefeated 7-0, and Martin 6-2, and then you see Tennessee Tech at 5-3, and followed by TSU, Eastern Illinois, Murray, SEMO, Eastern Kentucky, and Austin Peay. Well, we are just underway here on the Marcus Satterfield Show. We have got a lot of segments to get to, including, this should be fun, the top 10 plays of the year. So stay with us here on the Marcus Satterfield Show. Wherever, whenever cheering for whoever. There's one place to go for free OBC sports. The OBC Digital Network. Back here on the Marcus Satterfield Show presented by IWC Cash and Carry. What is the final player profile of the season? We just saw the highlights and this man had a huge role in that. Devin Sullivan, his pick six. So let's take a look more at his story. Introducing the player profile that is brought to you by TTUSports.com. Devin Sullivan, red shirt sophomore, outside linebacker. I'm from Muscle Shoals, Alabama. Um, I, st I lived with just me and my mom, and uh, she, uh, she, we're a, a hardworking woman. My parents and family has not missed not one game, so they've been on my in the stands every game. Like my granddad's. Um, very strong, very humble. They uh, told you how how you you know told you straight up how you did and how you did not do, and uh, they're just very hard on me and love me, love me to death. I just like to compete. Um, football gives me a chance just to compete with people around me. Um, I'm just a competitive person. These coaches uh, stay on top of us 24/7, and um, they they tell us you know. They check our grades, and every day I'm, I'm, I just come to practice and school to work. Uh, my favorite memory this year was uh, playing EKU in over, overtime and stopping them, and uh, winding up coming out with the W and beating them in OT. The goals that I've set for myself is just to come out, come out and compete, be a great leader, great teammate do whatever I can to help this team win and and succeed in life. Coach, and I mean, you saw him talk, and he made just such a big play in that football game. Yeah, for you know, two weeks in a row, we, we kind of joked about it. The player profiles had a, you know, a major role in the game, and Devin right there before the half to create the takeaway on the interception, running to the football, to the deflection of A.J. Flemister, and getting back for a touchdown. That uh, was a huge play for us, huge play for him. I like to see guys like that have success. He was unselfish in the spring. He was the starting tailback. 
and we moved him because defense, you know, wins championships, and we need to get the best players on defense. So we moved him to outside linebacker, and he wanted to do that. He accepted his role. He's one of the hardest working players on the team, and to to see him continually get better each week, and to ultimately have the success ending with a touchdown in his last game. Uh, of his first year playing defense was really good to see, and I think he's going to be an all-conference type player moving forward. I'd imagine with, with a win against Tennessee State, the win against Murray State, last couple of weeks of practice has been pretty good. Yeah, the energy's been there. Of course, the energy's always there with our kids. I mean, you, you joke about it all the time with our coaches. You know, our coaches have unbelievable energy, no matter who we play, where we play, what the record is, and I think our kids feed off that. So. You know, that's one thing. I think the reason we had success is because our kids didn't look at the scoreboard and they didn't look at the record. They just kept playing. When it's time to work, they put their hat on and went to work. Uh, they're very unselfish, and I think that's a result of us winning three of the last OVC games that we played. So you heard it from Coach. Practices were great. Let's take a look at one of those practices for the final week. Introducing Mike Up Today we talk with Price Partrick, the offensive quality control assistant as well as the tight ends coach. So once again, Mike Up. And that is brought to you by Pepsi. Ah, come on, sit in there. Go. Good, drive, 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 drive. Good. This this time through, Phil me is that middle backer. All right, fine grass. Go. Good. Push, 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 push. Yeah. All right. See how you're jumping into it right here? Yeah. Both feet are together. It should be that. Yeah. All right. Don't hop. Good. Get set. Quit moving around. Hey, break down. Don't overrun it. Have some football sense about you. Don't overrun it. Kid's gonna give me a heart attack. Come on, man. I can't keep saying this. Get your hands from the inside. We don't shoot them right here. No, you're still. When we watch on tape, your hands are still up here. On oh, Chris? Yes, your hands are still up here. What? <laughs> you need to run in the game? Oh, no. I mean, I got my here. Yeah, you did. Sit! You, he lost him inside, right? So you moved up. This fine work. Good. If he pulls it, we're 88 and out the gate there. It wasn't a pull read, but if he does, you had it right. Ah! Hey, be more physical on that brush spot. Like I played with last year, the new lineman for now. Yeah. He texted me like, we were talking. And I saw your test and I was like, yeah, you're here for me. <laughs> he was like, yeah, we are. Yeah, I'm a are. vertical threat. Yeah. Hey, be more patient there. You're, you're, tight. you're a receiver with a hand on the ground. Be patient. When he's walked up on you like that, you know you got a little more time than you think. Right. Get rid of him. Back again one final time on the Marcus Satterfield Show presented by IWC Cash and Carry. Well, Coach, I feel like this is going to be a good time. We are introducing to you the top 10 plays of the season. You ready for this? I am. I'm just glad we could find 10 plays. And, uh, you know, we were, we were talking about them earlier this week, and, and we got to at least sneak one in from this past game. So let's roll. Let's do it. Top 10 plays brought to you by the Golden Eagle Golf Club. Of course, you're doing a top 10. Best place to start is with number 10. And we just saw this, Devin Sullivan, we just talked about it with the player profile. He's going to intercept Katie Humphreys, take it to the house to cap off an extraordinary first half of football played by the Golden Eagles. Again, you know, he was a running back, going to be our starting running back in the spring. We moved him to defense. You know, he's unselfish. He never complained about the move. He embraced it. He works harder than anybody else on the team. And uh, good things happen to people who work extremely hard and great teammates. And so it's good to see him, again, end the season with a play like that. Glad he could sneak into the top ten because that was a heck of a play. couple of deflections. He ends up taking it to the house. So the Golden Eagles all over Murray State. That was one of the final plays of the season. Let's go to number nine and bring you the very first play of the season. Still can't believe this happened. An onside kick against Wofford, Nick Madonia, and you guys are covered. I can't, it makes me nervous <laughs> to watch. Like At the time, I was very confident. Now I look back, I, I, I hope I would still make that call, but it makes me really nervous. Great execution by, by Nick. Of course, he's done that all year long. Great job by our kickoff team not being offsides. Too many times you're offsides in those kicks and caught him off guard. First kick, first play of the season was a success. Play number nine, mighty fine. Let's take you to play number eight. Here we are at Mercer, September 17th. It is Michael Birdsong doing his thing, running around, making people miss, throws a bullet, one-handed grab, Chris Cates. What a catch. That was unbelievable because it was one of those, like Mike was just trying not to get sacked, then he throws it up. Chris Cates' big hand goes up there. He makes a play. Two years in a row, Chris has had great games against Mer uh, Mercer, and uh, he continued it on that day. That was a big-time play. Crazy catch there by Cates for play number eight. Now we show you play number seven. It's special teams. Here's an Austin Raleigh punt against Tennessee State, second-to-last game of the year. Malik Hall, he's ready. He's willing. 
takes it, splits through a couple of Tennessee State defenders, gets around the edge, huge block by Deontay Wilson. Only the kicker to beat. Can't do that, though, but Coach is still 51 yards. Yeah, the he got ribbed a little for not being able to make the <laughs> kicker miss, and he knows it, but that was a heck of a block set up by Deontay, and it was a legal block with his head up, and you can see all those guys celebrating with him to get a play on special teams, especially early in the game like that, and have a big hit. Created a lot of energy on our sidelines that helped us uh, you know, get the separation from a scoreboard standpoint to win that game. Oh, we're going to see the hit one more time. Man, look at that. Didn't launch, head up, threw his shoulder into the sternum. That was legal. Great wall of white right there. That's a good sign. Play number six, Michael Birdsong, Dantes Bird all season long. This is homecoming against Southeast Missouri. Patient, patient, patient. Dantes Bird's going to catch that for a touchdown. That's a, that's an NFL throw. And, uh, again, hopefully Mike gets a chance to play at the next level. But, you know, on the run, all, he doesn't take his offhand and had to press the ball at all. He just keeps it uh, as, he's, as he's stretching the play and extending the play and just kind of flips it. You see Russell Wilson doing this all the time. It's a, it's a habit of a baseball player being able to just throw it with the wrist basically like turning two at uh, second base. This was phenomenal accuracy, phenomenal arm strength, phenomenal vision, and again, extending that play. I mean, he's, he's on one, that. one foot, and he throws it the only place you can. Uh, that's unbelievable. For play number six, so we should have a pretty good top five in store if that's number six. Let's take you to number five. We go back to the Tennessee State game. We show Tim Collins a sack against Murray. How about another one? Boom on Ronald Butler, sack, fumble, Tennessee Tech football. And that was a big play because a lot of different variables within our brand of football. But the hit was tremendous. The energy it created on the sideline, as you can see from the wide copy, was tremendous. Calls the turnover, got guys running to the ball. Josh Poplar uh, gets the recovery. I mean, that, that embodies everything that we stand for here at Tennessee Tech and our football program. Play number five is a defensive one. Play number four is a defensive one. We take you back to homecoming, Tucker Stadium. Jesse Hoskett, the Southeast Missouri quarterback, the pass intercepted by Elliott Norman. He is going places. That's a touchdown for Tennessee Tech. Unreal play by, by uh, Elliott just to be able to make a play on the ball. He made the same play against Birdsong in, in summer camp. Turned his body around, caught it with all hands. A lot of times the ball's coming so hard you got to focus to catch it. You fall down right there. He didn't. And then watch the transition of all the white jerseys sprinting to the goal line to escort him in. He could have ran out of bounds, but he decides to turn into a fullback, lowers his shoulder, gets into the end zone. And what a huge play when offensively we were struggling, only scored you know 14 points that game. To get that one right before the half was, was huge. We jump into the top three. And we jump right back to Tennessee State. Nick Madonia, school record, 57-yard field goal. It is good. That was pretty cool because we were going to punt. I wasn't even thinking anyone could make a field goal from there. And uh, they called timeout. They had 10 guys on the field. And Coach Foreman said, if their guy can do it, our guy can do it. I said, let's try it. You know, Nick jogs out there. They put the ball down. He kicks it. And he jogs off the field. <laughs> you know, that's about as much emotion as he shows. But what a kick. 57 yards. That's, a, that's an NFL yeah. kick as well. And, uh, you know, he's a young kid. He's got a lot of kicks left in him. Cool, calm, collected. Nick Madonia. We're down to the final two. Here is play number two, the very first play of the football game at Mercer. It is Dante's bird. We know what he can do receiving the football. Takes it from his own end zone, and he is off to the races. See you later, my friend. Dante's bird, 100 yards. Golden Eagle strike first. Yeah, that was a – just looking back, seems like a lifetime ago. That was a hot day, and – one of our things, major things in the plan to win is dominate special teams. So to come out against a very athletic Mercer team and make a play of that magnitude uh, really set us up for a pretty good day. They had a chance to win it, couldn't finish it in the end. But what an explosive play by our, our kickoff return unit. Now the moment you've been waiting for, play number one. It's overtime. Tennessee Tech down by three to Eastern Kentucky. It is Michael Birdsong. It is Alex Carling. It is a touchdown. It's a game winner. What a night at Tucker Stadium. Yeah, that was huge. Just a, a, you know, that was a total team win. And, and right there, just to make that play for Alex Carling was, was a great night, a great finish to that night. Uh, great execution by Michael. And you can see the energy. You know, everything we talk about, energy and passion. Like, we know we didn't just win the Rose Bowl, but for us, we put a lot of hard work into that game. We practiced extremely well that week. And to cap it off with the per like precise execution like that, to be a really good opponent like Eastern Kentucky was a great night. Yeah, wide open. And then, of course, the celebration. I mean, anytime you win a game in overtime and you can see the fans, everybody into it. Yeah, no, and we don't care. There's no game too big or too small. That's, that's a product of a championship uh, program right there moving forward. So we're excited about things to come. 
So there you have it, your top 10 plays of the 2016 season. Coach, that was a pretty good list of top 10. That was. I think hopefully next year we can do a top 20. You know, I think there will be plenty, to, plenty, plenty coming in the future. I like it. Well, normally – this is the time where we, we preview next week's opponent. A little bit sad there is no next week's opponent. So I think that's going to do it on the Marcus Satterfield Show, Coach. Yep, till next season. And, uh, again, I urge you to go out and buy season tickets as soon as you can and jump on board because we will leave you behind. There's some great things coming. Championships coming, and we need everybody to jump on board. This is a great young team, and uh, there's, some, there's some good things on the horizon. Absolutely. And, and Coach, it, it's been fun doing this. 13 shows and in the books. Had a good time. I had a great time. I don't want it to end, especially when you're playing your best ball at the end of the season. Our kids, they're like, you know, find another game to play. Uh, we'll scrimmage each other, you know. But uh, we've got to, but again, I can't emphasize enough the great young kids we have in our program that bought into the plan to the win, the philosophy and the organization, and just I can't wait. They're, they're going to get started next week in the weight room. They're not taking any time off, and we're going to build a product here that can, you know, people can be really proud of. It's not just going to win OVC championships. But we're going to contend for national championships really, really soon, have a great recruiting class, and uh, just see what happens. But we're excited. Perfect. Well, all that on the horizon. Of course, you can check out ttsports.com, Tech Athletics, Twitter, Facebook, all those good things. I guess that's going to do it. The final episode here on the Marcus Satterfield Show. We will see you next year. With quality brand name products at affordable wholesale prices, Cash & Carry is the perfect place to shop. Whether shopping for individual, business, churches, or more, Cash & Carry is sure to meet your needs. Cash & Carry of Cookville, 931-528-8050.